Carmen Granto. As someone who has been so influential in the educational development of Niagara Falls came from humble beginnings. Born on November 22, 1941, Carmen Granto was raised in Niagara Falls, where starting his working life in his father's butcher shop located in downtown. He later started his professional teaching career in 1966 as a seventh grade teacher. He strived to make the lives of those around him better as well as his family. Roughly 30 years of teaching later, he became the superintendent of Niagara Falls Board of Education in 1992. On this board is where he made the most notable achievement of building the Niagara Falls High School during this time. He was also a member of the NAACP. Before Niagara Falls High School, the Niagara Falls area had three different high schools. LaSalle High School, Niagara Falls High School, and Trot High School. The goal was to combine all three of these schools to make the school system more centralized so it can give a better educational access to the children of the area. Niagara Falls High School was finished in the year 2002 and six years later after being on the board for 16 years. In 2008, Mr. Grantle stepped down and retired from education. Here in this documentary, we strive to go into better detail and ask the why questions. Knowing the trouble you went through fighting for better education in Niagara Falls, what made it all worth it? Uh, well, my, the goal is always to make, uh, try to make every kid learn as much as possible. And uh, when you see this kids walking across the stage, that's what makes it worthwhile. And they come back and they say thank you. Combining three high schools into one what would be the challenge what would be the biggest challenge to undertake? Uh, the adults. Uh, it wasn't the kids, it wasn't the financing, it was the, uh, the adults and the politicians in Albany. We had to get some laws changed and that took some time. And then the adults were all convinced they had a LaSalle, they wanted, their parents didn't want the kids, their kids to go to school with the high school uh, kids and the high school kids didn't want to go with LaSalle kids. And in the meantime, all the kids went out together anyways. So I knew that the kids wouldn't be in trouble, it was the parents. And just, just change in general, people are a little resistant. And they couldn't believe it wasn't going to cost the taxpayers any money in Niagara Falls, but it didn't, it doesn't. So what kind of laws did you need to change? Oh, there were several of them. Uh, uh, we had, a, uh, there was one law, I can't recall the name of it now, where you had to have five different uh, trades, different contracts with each trade. Uh, the plumbers had to have their separate uh, the construction, general construction had to have their separate, the electricians. And so we, you know, uh, we uh, had a, we, we lobbied Albany to make an exception to this. So we just had one contractor, and that was uh, Simonelli, and they would oversee everything, all the trades, and they worked it all out. Worked out well. We estimated it saved us about thirteen million dollars doing it that way. Plus, we uh, got exemption from sales tax for the vendors. Uh, plus, we got exemption from. Uh, since it was going to be privately owned, it, we couldn't tax the property. That didn't make any sense because they would pay us and then we'd pay the state. It didn't make any, you know, so there was no property taxes on the, for the investors of the property. And um, in general, it was, uh, and then we got the permission to have a, uh, a pre-project agreement with the local trade unions to make sure that it was local labor unions and local trades that were hired to do the work, not some outside firms or to uh, help. All right, so describe the journey from what got you to from about college until building the high school. Like, what what do you think are the main things that brought you all the way from being in education, learning to teaching, and then to expanding on that, being superintendent and running the board? Well, when I, when I first got uh, when I first got to teaching. You know, you look around, you could see, at least I thought I could see, I don't know if I was right or wrong at the time, but I said, there's got to be a better way to do this. All we're doing really is babysitting kids. We're not really teaching them anything. They're not learning, you know, or very little. I said, so, and then I said, well, the only way you can make change is you got to make it from the inside. So then I set about trying to just move up the ranks so I was in a position where I could make the changes I thought I, that had to be made. And that, you know, required a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, a lot of backing by my wife and my family, my kids, because I was always, always, always working. And uh, then finally you get in position to make the kind of changes and have influence, and uh, then you go about uh, doing it. So you plan your work and you work your plan. That's, That's a good what one. I did for 42 years. <laughs>